I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic.com. I've been trying to record this news video for the last six hours. There's been builders outside my flat drilling the road up. They've just got on lunch break. Can I record a news video in about 25 minutes while they have their chippies? There's only one way to find out. Let's take a look at the headlines quick. WWE are reportedly debuting a new title belt on Raw. A top WWE star is working without a contract. And we have new details on the Swamp Fight at Extreme Rules. We'll tell you more in a bit. So we are kicking things off with the news that WWE are about to unveil a brand new championship belt. And it's a redesign of a current title. And that title is the United States Championship. Currently, of course, held by Apollo Crews. This comes following the redesign of the Intercontinental title last year. Uh, Sami and Shinsuke Nakamura unveiling that beautiful new belt. It's not as good as the last one, is it? It's not as good. I, I really like the, the white strap classic design. They didn't need to change it. And I sort of feel the same way about the US title, to be honest. Anyway, WrestleVotes tweeting out an hour ago, the long-awaited debut of the new United States Championship title will take place tonight on Raw. Source said the belt has a clean yet prestigious look to it. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's a nice feather in the cap, isn't it, for Apollo, who uh, has had, I don't know, he's been alright on the main roster. Always decent matches. You can always rely on Apollo Crews for decent matches. Um, but he's a guy without much personality. And that's improved, especially it, it felt under Heyman. Heyman seemed to really be investing in Apollo Crews. Uh, and now he's the champion. And fingers crossed that the redesign will maybe spark an interesting storyline or something for him because he's a guy with heaps of potential uh, and we're just sort of waiting to see it and this is his first big singles championship and yeah fingers crossed for apollo cruz we don't know what it's going to look like we're apparently going to find out on raw uh, as i say clean yet prestigious as long as it's not a butterfly to be honest uh, i want to see it covered in glitter with a smoke machine built into it and uh, lasers are always good. Think Naomi's uh, LED, the, the, the light up belt. That times 100, because that is what's going to make Apollo Crews. Seriously, though, we'll find out what it looks like tonight, hopefully, according to reports. Uh, and then we can all slag it off in the comments, because that's what we do. Because we're never happy. We're, we're never happy. Let's move on. Next up, we have reports that a top WWE superstar is currently working without a contract. Something which, historically, WWE hate for obvious reasons because we've seen it before where somebody who isn't under contract pops up on a rival promotions tv show and yeah vince must hate this vince must absolutely hate this we are talking about the master of the 619 samoa joe current no ray mysterio currently working without a WWE contract. Uh, and we have the reason for this. According to Dave Meltzer, the Wrestling Observer, uh, speaking on the radio show this morning, he said he had asked for a raise. Vince said, look at the situation we're in. We just got rid of a bunch of people. Obviously, WWE uh, laying off loads and loads of on-screen talent, uh, backstage personnel, agents, trainers, all that stuff in the past few months. While reporting, it's got to be said, record increases in revenue that's that's important to note so i'm not sure that excuse really flies but obviously Rey mysterio is not happy financially and he is currently in one of the most high profile feuds in wwe him and seth seth just bloody blinded him dominic's involved as well um and i, I think it's a great feud i can see why they wouldn't want to put that on the back burner because it's brilliant i think it's some of seth's especially best work of his WWE career, um, and it's great, but it's also, I guess, a bit dangerous because Rey Mysterio is there and he's working week by week and getting paid per appearance, I would assume. Uh, so yeah, pretty pretty dangerous stuff. We also have uh, a bit of an insight into what the original plan was, and this could still take place, but I, I don't think it will, but the original plan for Seth and Rey's match at Extreme Rules. And it was going to be, according to reports, once again, an eye for an eye match. Uh, I mean, Ray is without one anyway at the moment, or at least he's got the, 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 the blacked out window on his mask. But uh, yeah, the, the plan was to do this match and the only way to win the match is to blind your opponent. It's, it's something else, isn't it? Extreme Rules, the horror show. No, 
The horror show at Extreme Rules. I'll tell you more about that in a second. Um, yeah, so, I mean, you can't imagine Rey Mysterio coming out on top of that one, can you? It's not a very baby-faced way to win a match. That said, Jeff Hardy just glassed an innocent man on Friday night. Anything can happen in the World Wrestling Federation. Uh, so we'll see where that goes. Uh, I can't imagine Rey Mysterio leaving WWE. Like, he's, he, really, he's going to want to stay there because he, he can't have that much longer left as an in-ring talent. But also, he's mentioned numerous times in interviews before that his priority is getting to work with his son, Dominic. And he's got that opportunity now. Hey, maybe that's why they started it. Maybe that's why they started it now to keep Ray about, to get him to re-sign, and now Ray is playing hardball. Who can blame him? I want to see the eye versus eye match. Eye for an eye match, rather. I really want to see that. Let's make let's make Extreme Rules as absolutely bat-poo crazy as possible. The reports say that they're going to pack it with matches, so expect, I guess, lots and lots of little matches, and we've got the cinematic match in the Swamp match, the Swamp fight, rather, and all that. Uh, anyway, Extreme Rules, while we're on the subject, is changing its name, uh, or, or changing its name, sort of, its tagline, the order of its tagline, I guess. Um, so, it was Extreme Rules, colon, The Horror Show. But now it's been rebranded on WWE.com, and expect to hear uh, the, the commentators refer to it this way, The Horror Show at Extreme Rules. Um, and I've got a feeling, and this is just purely speculation, I've got a feeling that is quite simply because Extreme Rules, the horror show, sort of uh, insinuates that Extreme Rules as a show is horrific and that maybe it shouldn't be happening with everything going on in the world and all of the horrors currently facing us globally and dozens of WWE superstars contracting coronavirus. So they changed it to... <laughs> Sorry. So to the horror show at Extreme Rules. So I guess that insinuates that the horror show is taking place at Extreme Rules. Um, and that's... Does that make sense? I think you get what I'm trying to say. Uh, you know, wording is important. Wording is important. And uh, so is wearing a mask. Next up, speaking of the horror show at Extreme Rules, we have new details on the Swamp Fight. It's uh, Bray Wyatt, of course, versus Braun Strowman for the Universal title, and it's taking place in and around a swamp. So the new details are as follows, and uh, this is courtesy of Wrestling Inc., who have learned that WWE stunt coordinator Ellis Edwards is involved with the match. He has been involved since way back when. He did early WCW stuff in the early 90s. Uh, he was responsible for Braun Strowman tipping over the ambulance. Uh, he was responsible for the ring collapse with, uh, with Show in 2017. Um, and he's been around for a long time. So this suggests, and I think we all knew this was coming anyway, that this is going to be a cinematic match with lots of crazy bollocks, which I'm all for. Um, and further reports are stating that WWE is indeed going to go with what, again, I think we all thought would happen, which is like a three faces of Wyatt thing. Uh, so this time he's going to be old school cult leader, uh, spooky Bray, and then the plan is for this feud to continue at SummerSlam, uh, where we will see once again The Fiend. So it'll be The Fiend versus Braun Strowman at SummerSlam for the Universal title. Mixed feelings on this, because I really like the three faces of Wyatt thing. I think that's really cool, um, and I like the fact that that's leading all the way up to one of WWE's Big Four, the biggest party of the summer. Um, at the same time, I think it's just a, it's a dangerous position, isn't it? We've seen it before where WWE have booked themselves into a corner with Wyatt um, and it's backfired on them as far as putting him in the title picture goes. Like It either harms him by having him get beaten or then he's got the belt and it's very, very difficult to book that. He's a character, I guess, that just doesn't really need the title. He doesn't need any titles to be effective and to... to uh, to be part of really compelling TV. So mixed feelings on this, but I still think it could be a lot of fun. So I'm definitely, definitely willing to give it a chance. Uh, Braun Strowman as champion has been meh at the moment. It really feels like over on SmackDown, there's not enough um, top guys who are who who could be positioned in like the, the world title picture. And that's totally Booking's fault as well, because you've got such a tremendous amount of, of talent over there. I really think that during this this lockdown period, WWE should have been investing in uh, new 
up and coming talent or people who have been there for a while uh, and haven't had the opportunity before the Cesaros, the Big E's, that sort of thing. Instead, we're, we're like the Miz and Morrison thing was just so out of nowhere. And it was entertaining, I guess. Was it? It was all right. It was all right. I'm not buying Braun as champion, is what I'm saying. And finally, we have news regarding a current WWE main roster superstar saying that they want to go back to NXT and win a world title. We are talking about Bianca Belair. Yeah, I forgot she's a main roster superstar too because they never put her on pit and TV. Anyway, she was talking to Fox Sports uh, and said, of course I want to be champion across Raw and SmackDown. I want to before the end of my career. Before the end of my career, I will say this, I want to be NXT Women's Champion because I worked so hard in NXT. That was my home, that's where I started. Like, I'm getting emotional just talking about it. That's her saying she's getting emotional, not me. Though I'm feeling it too, Bianca, because I really think you should be on the telly. It was weird, wasn't it? Like, she uh, she made her main roster, uh, like a proper debut at WrestleMania, and then she, she came out on Raw. She was used for one or two weeks and then she's not really been seen since. And I just don't understand it because Bianca Belair, to me, is a bit of a total package, I think. Because she, yeah, she is. She's got, she's got the in-ring stuff. She's ridiculously charismatic, ridiculously marketable. And she works well as heel or face as well. And I just don't understand it. It's one of those things, and I'm so fed up of talking about NXT call-ups that don't amount to anything on the main roster through no fault of their own. Um, but it's another one, like, it felt like they brought her up for that big WrestleMania moment, if you want to call it that, and then didn't have any plans for her afterwards, and they didn't really give it any thought. And I just don't understand why she's not on TV. Apparently she's on the C shows. She pops up on main event from time to time. But the only time that I've really heard anything about her in the past couple of months is, uh, is it being mentioned that she made the Street Profits gear for some of those wacky Viking Raiders segments, doing the golf and the basketball and all that bollocks. Put her on telly, put her on telly. I should have I should have put that story in the middle because I'm ending on a bit of a downer now, aren't I? Oh. Anyway, tune in to live reactions to Raw. 1 a.m. BST tonight. We might see Bianca Belair. We won't see Bianca Belair, but we probably will see a brand new title belt. I cannot wait. Three hours, come on. See you in a bit.